Hello my friends, it's Kayla. I have an idea for a video for a reading week in my life for a little TBR, but I can't figure out what that TBR is until I film this intro and even figure out if it's gonna work. So here we are. Basically, I have this reading challenge that I've done, the buzzword-a-thon, a little B. Um, every single month there's a prompt. It's a word or a theme of words, like for example, January, it's reading books with who, what, where, when, why, and how in the title. And you can either do it as like a little read-a-thon, where for the first week of the month you pick as many books as you can, you read as many as you can with that word, or you can do it as a reading challenge throughout the entire year, where you just read one book every single month, or really whenever you want. It's like a little checklist of words and you read whatever qualifies and then you've successfully completed the challenge. I don't participate in my own reading challenge. I don't make videos around it. Sometimes I'll pick the prompt for the certain month that I know that I'm like doing a book club pick that would be conducive to that word. But other than that, I don't really look at the challenge very much besides giving some recommendations. Like I will post pictures every month of things that I would recommend you read that I have read or that I know of that you could read. But what I thought would be fun is I try to complete my own reading challenge in a week. And I don't know what that means because I haven't looked into if I've completed any of the prompts so far. So I'm thinking, this is all the books that I've read so far this year. I'm filming this in July. You're probably not seeing it until I'm guessing September. I'm gonna look at all of the titles and figure out which prompts I've completed and whatever is left, then I will complete it this week. So I guess we'll just run through the list and I will look at the stack and we'll figure it out. I guess I need to get closer. I haven't really thought about how to film this. I just stacked up everything that I've read. Okay, so in January, it was the five W's. I have no doubt that I completed that, like in January itself. I wanna say where the drowned girls go. I did it. Is there anything else? Should I pull out like everything? I need to get a chair in here, hold on. Okay, definitely completed that one. How, who, how, when, where. February was pronouns. I've definitely hit that in here. Easy peasy. Death in her hands. We've also got her, she, we, they, I. Next up for March is locations, which I know I hit because I specifically did locations in March because I knew we were reading the Paris apartment. We've got that right here, but let's see if I hit it anywhere else too. Okay, we've got Mayo. We also have house, like that could easily count. The world is a location. Sorrow land definitely works. Another world. Mercury's a place. Oh, world again. Oh my god, I really killed this one. Kingdom. Sea. Moon. Pirate's Cove. Barn. World. Mars. Or even the Mars room is a place. This was definitely open for a lot of interpretation. Whatever you wanted to make fit, I was like, do it. These ones have place in the title. So it's like the resting place. Wild places. Like those are places. What's next? April was big and little. And I know I did this because again, the book club selection was all her little secrets, which actually fit for quite a few different prompts. I read that in the correct month and everything. I don't see any others. Usually big and little and small and large are words that I come up with a lot, but I did it. Check it off. Next is directions. That was for May. So that's like north, south, east, west, but also up, down, around, above, below. Here, we've got under, behind, far could even work. I read a book I don't have here called The Darkness Outside Us. So outside is a location or direction. Maybe closer, maybe out. Oh, here we go, down. That's a clear winner. Another under, all right, crush that one. For June, we had all and I recommended highly Ophelia after all, but also if you hadn't read the book club pick, All Her Little Secrets yet, that was a recommendation. Also, all systems read, and this is all your fault. Okay, so that's halfway. That is six prompts. I've gotten them all. Hopefully now we'll hit some prompts that I haven't. So I have something to make work for my TBR for this video. July is book related words. This might be the one. Now for me, I don't want anything that just says a novel to count. I talked about on my Instagram post that like, yeah, you could do that. But when I'm completing the challenge, I want it to be things in the actual title itself. Even if it's an anthology, if it says like stories, I think you should be able to count it, but I don't want to. So I don't think 
then I've completed this one. I'm looking for words like book, paper, pages, print, story. I think the closest I could say is chalk, but that would be a stretch. And since I'm not trying to make it stretch for a challenge, I'm trying to find prompts that I haven't completed. We're gonna call this number one prompt that I have not completed. So we'll talk about my TBR after I figure all these things out. Um, next up though is August and it's items. Items is so easy. Even like stars. It's an object, it's a noun. Water, this is the easiest prompt to complete, right? I don't know, filth, arsenic, gate, tiles, ice cream, jar. I guess this is where we can use chalk, that's an item. Chain, okay, clearly that's a success. September is light and dark, okay. So I've definitely done that because they just talked about the darkness outside us. I also have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. I think that's it for that one. October is Creatures and Animals. Oh, I thought that that wouldn't be one I've completed, but I definitely have because I have vampires. I also have Goddess and like Frankenstein and Tiger. Could we say Maidens? I don't know. Oh, and Centaur too. Okay, let's check November. Oh, Ing. Oh, I've definitely had titles with ink, like running, dancing, talking. This is Nupaming, which has an ING. We've got beginning, breathing, killing, tripping. Oh no. Okay, let's hope that December, I haven't done the prompt because then we have two, at least two prompts. And like, I can't do a video where I just read one book. Oh no. December, oh, December's numbers. I've definitely done that, seven days and the fifth season okay so what does that leave us with um i have completed my own reading challenge congrats to me except for one book so instead of just reading one book for this video how about i read five and all of them have to fit the book related prompt so let's add another challenge onto here and just off the top of my head i have to pick something already on my tbr shelf something from the library something that's a brand new release so I get to go buy something um something that's been let's say recommended or highly loved by a member of the community and then if I have any left I will do a poll with those options like maybe if I have a bunch from my TBR or a bunch on my TBR shelf on Goodreads that I can grab from the library I will do a little poll for my channel members and they also get to dictate what's happening in this video so I will get back to you in just a second when I've decided my TBR. I am so excited about the TBR. So here's what I've selected. From my TBR shelf, or actually my TBR closet, like I've owned it for years, very excited to have an excuse to get to it, is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. Unlike the title seems to imply, it's not a collection of stories. It is a novel about a woman who's distancing herself from her community, and she puts together this group of women, brings them together to be a part of a creative writing group. And I think it's gonna be about all of the women's individual groups growth journeys and learning how to tell their stories. From the library and also fitting for my challenge of a booktube favorite, I chose notes on an execution. Something else that I thought would be fun is to challenge myself to find as many different book related words as I could within this selection. So we've got stories, we've got notes, some upcoming ones just are the word book. But this is the story of a character who's on death row and it's about all of the people's lives, the women, I think it's three or five women whose lives he impacted. His mother, his sister, a homicide detective, through their lens we learn about Ansel's life and how he ended up here. This one has shown up on a couple different people's favorites lists of the year and something that I probably would have ended up reading in my 2023 episode of Reading Book Doers Favorites, so I thought I would just do it now. And then both of these next ones would work for something that's a brand new release because they're things that I just recently added to my TBR. We have The Book of the Most Precious Substance, which is a literary thriller or existential horror about this magical book about sex, sex magic, and all of the people who want to get their hands on the book. Then I also have The Book Eaters, which is a fantasy story where we're following a young woman who has her family eats books. That's how they gather, retain all of their knowledge. Her brothers were raised reading stories of adventure and fun and power, and she was raised on fairy tales and cautionary tales and more soft feminine fiction. And now she has a son of her own and her son wants to eat 
human brains for their knowledge rather than just books. I think this is gonna have some really interesting commentary and I can't wait to read it. And then as you might know, I often like to have a short story collection in a vlog like this so I can read a little bit of something every single day and complete a whole extra book by the end of the vlog. So I pulled out some anthologies and I just put up a poll so we'll talk about the results in a minute. This one's called Other Terrors and it says Original Tales. So we could have the word tail represented. I have The Way Spring Arrives and other stories. And then these ones both have the word book in the title, Book of Magic, Book of Swords. Just because of the season that we're in, I have a feeling this is gonna be the pick, but I am also really excited about this one. And I have plans already to read some stories from these in a future video, if they don't get selected for this one. So here's what we have going on in the vlog, and I'll check in with you when I start my first read. <laughs> Good morning. I put my hair in little twists last night. Hopefully they turn out okay. I've been trying to decide this morning what book I want to start with. And then the library decided for me because my audiobook hold came in for notes on an execution. And I always like to have an audiobook going throughout like a reading vlog. So that's what I'm going to be listening to today. I'm also going to be um, automizing <laughs> my house. You know how you have to like winterize a vehicle? I'm going to be, I'm going to be putting autumn decor around my house and just really leaning in to the fall season i just bought this really gaudy gold pumpkin and now i don't know where to put it and i got some other things that i'm just gonna toss into various places so i can feel like even though i don't participate in the pumpkin spice latte introduction to the season this is how I feel a part of it today's september 1st i'm gonna be filming like my wrap up liam has hockey camp today and other than that i think i'm just gonna be reading i feel like i heard someone say the audiobook has multiple narrators 12 hours you are okay there are i was expecting them to be women maybe i don't understand what this book is about let me read a little bit and then i'll get back to you way into the audiobook well and the physical book just the book and i'm very intrigued already so we're following this man who's on death row and he's talking a bit about his experience more so like the current day activities of him trying to get a guard to like get him off of death row and seeing like if she's successful in that and him taking advantage of her and then we flashed to what i didn't know if it was going to be his birth or the birth of his child because suddenly we were following this woman and she was giving birth and there was this like asshole man in the barn with her and I was like is that him or is that his dad turns out it was his dad and we're following Ansel who's on death row his childhood and his up bringing um with this woman who loves and cares for him and then the man that she got involved with who everyone tried to warn her not to marry um and it turns out he's a terrible person and he is awful to Ansel growing up and obviously I don't want to spoil anything that goes on from here but I'm just interested to see what other kind of timelines we're going to be in what other characters we're going to follow I think he ends up I don't want to spoil anything okay it doesn't say where he ends up in his childhood but it does say we're following a sister of his her perspective we're in now and i'm finding interesting i'm definitely hooked i haven't gotten to read as much today as i thought i would it's kind of end of day now but i have a feeling i'm going to be reading this late into the evening i'm ending the night at 70 percent in i just remembered i have a dentist appointment and i have to leave the house at 7 a.m tomorrow so i'll finish this after that it's odd for me to be 70% into a book and not really have any feelings. Like I'm not loving it, I'm not disliking it, but I remain interested in the story. It's interesting how it feels like a thriller, just the tone that's being used. Even though there's nothing super thrilling happening, because we're getting a lot of flashbacks to how this man ended up here, all the things he did, all the people he impacted, but it feels very tense, like we're waiting for something to happen. And I do wonder if it's all gonna be leading up to his death, or if it's gonna be one of those books that for the last like 20, 30%, a bunch of action happens that we didn't expect 
as a reader. I'm trying to think of examples. Okay, Room by Emma Donahue. I don't know why that came to mind. That's a book that like pitches itself as a certain story and then obviously the last third of the book knowing like what happens would be a spoiler. So it makes sense that it's not in the synopsis, but it's like an unexpected action portion of the book. Same with um, Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. That like caught me off guard. When you think it's about the past, but it turns out to be a good chunk of the story, present day and craziness happening. So I'm curious what's gonna happen here. Right now I could easily see this being a four star, even though I don't feel passion for it. I think it's a good, well-told story. And I think I was worried a little bit that it was gonna try to like humanize this murderer or make you sympathize with him outside of like it is doing some just like human mind exploration things but it's not trying to make him redeemable and i like i just never know the take that a story is going to have on that type of a character anyway going to bed see you tomorrow hello hello i have no update on my book but um i do have an update on my toothbrush i got a free one from the dentist the dentist went great i have a whole nother appointment on tuesday and then another appointment the following tuesday because i have a couple tiny little cavities that i didn't get filled five years ago and i haven't been to the dentist since liam suddenly had a cold so now he's sad we just went and got way too many groceries and now we're getting lunch rob's here he's getting me a smoothie and himself a smoothie. Is that the smoothie place? No. I don't know if you can see booster juice. I'm stretching as far as I can. But that's what we're up to today. And then we'll go home and put away the groceries. And I have some editing to do. And then I'm gonna finish my book. I really wanna finish my book. Thank you. Yum. I got you a warrior booster so we don't make you sick. Liam's dropping food behind you. So. Oh a warrior booster? No, I was just grabbing Warriors. This was a truly excellent book. If you're looking for something for your book club and this is the style of book that you read, highly recommend. The sheer restraint of the author not putting forth any commentary or opinions and just opening up so many conversations without telling you what to think is impeccable. My heart tells me it was four stars. My mind tells me it was five because I have so much respect for how she decided to tell this story and all of the conversations that could come out of this. Obviously it's talking about the mind of a serial killer, but it's also touching on like the cultural phenomenon of the obsession with true crime and who those stories focus on. It's exploring the justice system and like what prison is for. Is rehabilitation possible? It talks about mental health and the healthcare system and the lack of understanding, lack of resources. And I think the last line of the synopsis just saying, um, it asks readers to consider the false promise of looking for meaning in the psyches of violent men. The way that this man talks about his crime and the way that it's written in second person and really puts you in his mind and his complete lack of caring that he's murdering people without trying to give reasoning or excuses or like, if only this had happened, I could have gone this direction because I was raised this way because I had these childhood experiences, this is where I ended up. It's not saying any of those things, but it's bringing those conversations to the forefront truly without trying to excuse anything that he's done. And the choice to mostly tell the story through all of these women and their interactions with him is just so excellent. And I I think I have to give it a five. With that said, I almost feel like this could become overhyped because it's not like a thrilling story. It didn't have a huge emotional impact on me. It doesn't have shocking reveals. And I'm just thinking about the list of things that normally accompany a five star for me. I just think this was really smart and I would be able to broadly recommend it to most people. Now, looking at the poll for my channel members, with 50% of the vote, we did indeed have other terrors win. So I think I'll read the first one or two stories before I go to bed and I'll let you know in the morning how it's going. Good morning, today, wow, I don't know what noise that was. Good morning, today we're heading to the pool. I'm trying to decide which book I need to bring with me, the one about erotic stories or the one about a sex manual. Before I get into that, uh, let me tell you about the first two stories from here. You know something I love? An introduction to an anthology. Like they're always so good. And like, I wanna write one of these one day. Just a two page 
three page explanation of why I would be putting together an anthology. What types of stories I'm hoping to tell and like historical context for a genre. Like it just seems like so much fun to research and put together all of these thoughts. Anyway, so the goal with this anthology is all about um, classic stories regarding otherness and how people are commonly featured in horror stories and classic novels and like they're the scary person or the person no one wants to be involved with and it's because they're different according to the rest of the cast of characters and so these are meant to feature both like the others and people who are witnessing others and just like having very conversations about like prejudice judgment some are apparently unique stories and some are specifically retelling or reimagining classics so we have that intro and it was great and then the first little thing we get is a kind of poem by Christina Sung called Other Fears and I think it was meant to be this ominous little intro that just gave you a tone for the collection and it did do that but it wasn't like a story it didn't have established like characters or reasoning behind anything or an ending that like felt like it meant anything it just felt like something that was put in here if you didn't read the introduction and you wanted an idea of what the stories were going to be like it goes like you are everything that i fear because you are other from me you hate me i hate you but we shouldn't fear each other i'm gonna learn how to overcome my fear and then she overcomes her fear did it set a tone sure did I like it? No. Uh, the next one is Idiot Girls by Jennifer McMahon and I feel like I would give this three stars. It felt like a, it was like a YA horror short story about two teenage girls. Um, they're in love. That's awesome representation and I think they think that other people are judging them for being queer. Meanwhile they are judging this man who lives in their apartment complex who's from another country. They're like sneaking into his house and they're looking more into him than they should be because they're making judgments and assumptions about him. There was a reveal at the end that was very expected so no hard feelings towards this one. It just felt like a very generic like teen horror story. Next up I have a story from Amakatsu though and I previously loved her short story that was in whatever the most recent short story collection I read was. It's called Waste Not and then the one following is called Night Shopper by Michael H. Hansen who I've never heard of. Maybe I'll read these two at the pool. I woke up today with a cold so I'm not feeling great. I brought this with me. I didn't start it. I don't think I really filmed anything. I just started feeling poorly but I did actually finish Other Terrors which I wasn't planning on doing, but I will explain. Normally with a short story collection, I like reading a couple stories a day throughout the entire vlog, um, but I kept waiting. I didn't want to update you until I liked a story because I, I didn't like the first few. And then I kept waiting and I kept waiting and I kept waiting. And it's not just that I didn't love them. Like I was giving out one and two stars to most of the stories. So I just kept reading. It took until this like this is how much i read this is how much i had left before i gave something four stars and that was by anna davila cardinal and then the next one by holly lynn walrath i also gave four stars and then the stephen graham jones i also gave four stars oh and then the michael thomas ford i gave a 4.5 and then the tanana reeve do i give a 4.5 so all of my favorites and all of my favorite like authors too were all shoved at the end and halfway through this collection i was ready to film a whole rant because I'm I'm really disappointed by this collection and I was getting so frustrated with how bad the stories were like honestly but the end definitely made up for it so now at least I don't only have negative things to say but like when you put an inclusive anthology oh how do I phrase this I just don't assume my first thought isn't that I'm going to be reading from a bunch of like old white men about like trans Muslim women and Japanese women and whatever all of the identities that were in here. It started to feel like it was a creative writing project like they had given the prompt to all of the authors that they had to write a story from the perspective that was outside of their own experience like that's what it felt like. It felt like the editors which side note the fact that there are two editors in here I feel like one is pretty common but two two people looked over all of those stories and thought yeah those are good baffling and here's the thing I don't think that writing outside of your own ex experience is inherently bad or that like 
you could say all oh, the stories that they were telling in here the people who belong to those identities should have written those stories like that doesn't make sense and i don't think the people from marginalized communities should have to write from their own experience and should be forced to write own voices stories all the time what makes an anthology inherently inclusive is the inclusion of in my opinion majority varied backgrounds as far as race sexuality culture religion gender disability etc so i agree with the idea that it's about good stories it's not about you know exploiting your identity or that some people shouldn't write certain stories it's about good stories like the best stories should have been chosen but they weren't like obviously my opinion is subjective and other people will probably love this but like wow these are some of the worst horror stories i've ever read what it actually felt like was that these story like there wasn't a theme as far as otherness that didn't feel genuine to the stories and it seemed like maybe the editors selected stories they were already interested in like they already knew were out there they were already stories that were seeking a collection to belong to and they were like okay well i'll put your story in here but you need to make it othering because the othering in all of the stories the ones that weren't specifically about culture and identity the otherness felt both heavy-handed and like it wasn't important to the story that they were trying to tell like there was one story about a woman who <laughs> was in like a fitness class at the pool and they find something in the water and i swear i could just see the conversation happening behind the scenes that like okay i like this story but you need it's one star by the way for me um but how can we make it more othering so it fits in this collection oh i know i'll make the main character say this class is full of 50 year old ladies and because i'm slim and beautiful they don't accept me and also like oh the fitness instructor he has more energy than a normal fitness instructor he's a little bit different oh and also the song that's playing on the radio let's make it called like the other woman it felt like an english class where you like find out your professor really likes cats so you think if you include cats in your short story and if you mention cats five times maybe you'll get some extra credit but then the second half was really good there was some like uh cosmic horror some things that felt like black mirror episodes some like creature horror but the first half i swear like they weren't even horror stories and a lot of times i feel mediocre about short stories and i give them all three stars and i'm like they're forgettable blah blah blah, blah. so many of these i finish them going what the fuck was that yeah i know i didn't touch on each individual story like i planned to but i don't know if i can recommend this because the stories that i enjoyed weren't incredible five stars and so many of them were a one that i just <laughs> can't in good conscience like tell people that they should buy this <laughs> Good morning. This cold is really kicking my ass. I meant to read the entirety of this last night and then I just fell asleep. I gave up on all of my plans. I was gonna do a charcuterie board. I was gonna maybe drink some wine or some other things and try to read this in a funny state because people have told me that this is very strange. But I think I'm just gonna read it today. So I'll read the first couple of chapters, let you know the initial vibes. Reading update, I'm like a third of the way in. Actually more than a third. I feel like not much has really happened and it's definitely not weird yet. Besides the idea of this weird book being about sex magic, we're just following Lily as she's trying to not just figure out where the book is, but who the buyer is. So she gets introduced to this idea of somebody looking for this book and willing to pay like upwards of seven figures for this book. There, there was only like three to five copies ever made. But before she can even really start the hunt for it, the person who was looking for it died. Not the buyer, but the like in-between person, the dealer. One of her friends, a fellow book dealer, has died. And so now she wants to make the money still. And she's really good at finding these obscure books, but she doesn't know who the buyer is. So she's looking for the book, but she's also looking for the buyer and trying to look into all of this guy's like notes and address books, trying to figure out who was willing to pay that much money. I feel like it's really setting up the characters well. Like she has various people that she's friends with a little romantically interested in she also has this husband um who has gone through something traumatic and he's like unable to care for himself and i wonder if somehow this book is gonna get like maybe she's gonna get the book 
and try out some of the weird things in it and maybe it'll like fix her husband and then she won't want to sell the book but then maybe all these people will be after her because everybody wants this book i don't know i'm excited for some action to kick off basically today is liamy's no. first day no. of grade seven no. he's so excited no. he doesn't want to go he has a new back and a new water bottle. My favorite thing when going back to school was back to school shopping and like organizing all of my binders and stuff. So I'm glad that I get to vicariously do it through him now. Okay, Liam's at school. He's only there for a couple hours before I pick him up. So I'm running a couple quick errands in town. Um, like I said, getting all ready for the first day of school is like very important to me. And the idea of like just setting the right tone is just part of the going back to school ritual where you like get rid of everything that you own that you don't need you clean out your whole space you reorganize and so you wake up on your first day of school and everything's just like clean and tidy and you're mentally so ready because physically around you everything is good so the back of my jeep is full of board games like 20 board games that i'm going to donate ones that we haven't played in at least a year and then i just stopped at home Sense and i got some like baskets and shelving so things can be really nicely organized we cleaned out like everything last night but we need some just like little bins to put stuff in and then something else I'm gonna do this morning is I'm gonna hit up some used bookstores and try to find Cersei because if you missed my fall TBR I pulled out some things from the jar that I have to read because of members suggestions and one of the books was Cersei which I'm not willing to pay full price for if I can avoid it so I stopped at Value Village they do not have it in fact their shelves are like the emptiest I've ever seen and I don't know if it's this time of year or the fact that they started just a couple months ago individually pricing books so now they're not like $2.99 to $5.99 they're all tagged individually not based on like ticket price and so each one has its own sticker to scan which I'm sure makes it easier for people and the checkout but now every book is like $8.99 $14.99 absolutely ridiculous prices considering they get those books for free so I just feel like people might be donating their less and really going to use bookstores if they want to make a little bit of money on their books or donating to shelters more I don't know but I fully support it because I think Value Village is trash for doing that so I'm on the hunt for Cersei and I never do this like when I go to a used bookstore it's just to hang out and browse I'm never looking for a book especially not going to multiple places to find one specific book but that's what I'm about to do and I finished the book of the most precious substance and I just didn't know how to update you because trying to figure out how to sum up this book and my feelings about this book I knew it was gonna be five stars like pretty soon in I was just waiting for it to really build into something and it's so hard to describe it is really similar to Sarah Grand's come closer as far as tone like there are moments where you're like what the fuck and then there are moments where you're like what the fuck like, it's so fun and ridiculous but it's also weird but the writing itself isn't weird it's just the scenarios they get into and it's not over the top weird it's just like a little bit magical there is a lot of sex in here but it's very much related to like what they're trying to do with the book and this cover is very funny and all of the real messages and takeaways from this book impeccable I'm telling you I really can't think of a book this is super similar to like it gives me a little bit of bunny vibes for some reason but not in setting just in some of the thought processes it's also just like about society and um, pretentiousness and and a lot about power and how you can never have enough power you'll always be seeking more and humanity is so obsessed with money but then it's also just a lot of like sexual exploits and like meeting up with different people and trying to find the book and trying to sell the book and it really is everything that I thought it would be so if you're into the explicitness that this contains and you like the weirder books that I tend to like I think this could be a win I'm so so happy I decided to pick this up uh, next up I'm gonna be reading I think the erotic stories book but first I'm on a hunt for Cersei it's also a Tuesday so I don't know if there will be any new releases at my indigo but if the weight of blood is there actually I can check online I don't have to go into store okay it doesn't look to be in store at indigo but it might be at mosaic so if am I down to go downtown right now oh my gosh today is my lucky day the first place I stopped Ted's 
shout out to Ted's. I had a feeling because Cersei is so popular and like continues to have resurgences or just like Madeline Miller in general that I would struggle. And the woman at first was, cause I just asked her, I was like, should I go looking for it? Would it be here? Cause a lot of bookstores, like they have a list, like their customers will send them lists and anytime a book comes in, they'll like call them up. They won't even end up on the shelves. So she was like, I don't think so. And then she was like, let me just look right here by the front door, literally right when you walk in the door where all the most popular, like quick moving titles go. And it was sitting right there. Just one copy. Incredible. What else should I use my luck on today? Should I buy a lottery ticket? Well, you know what? This means that I have time to go to Mosaic, so I might do some damage there. I think I showed just enough restraint. So I got three black books. These vibes actually go really well together. We've got The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. That's the retelling of Carrie. Then we have Making Love with the Land by Joshua Whitehead, which I completely forgot I wanted. And this is the person who put together that anthology of indigenous stories I really love. And then also wrote Johnny Appleseed, which I think I gave four stars. So this is a nonfiction. This is nonfiction, right? 10 unique heart piercing nonfiction pieces. I think the cover is absolutely stunning. And then I found this and it's by a Canadian horror author and it only has like four reviews on Goodreads so I just had to get it. It's called Tear, Erica McKean. And it says it's like a reclamation of female rage. Anyway, she's like a local British Columbian author. So there you have my mini book haul for the day. We're home now. Here's what I picked up besides Liam's organization stuff. I got this for organizing my makeup because my old one has gotten like gross because it's like a fabric one. Also, I just got in the mail my Cabes water sweater from Etsy. It didn't include Grey Warren in my fall TBR. I'm obviously gonna read it someday, but like that'll be a cute picture. What else did I get? Oh, you know what I got? I really, I don't know where I'm gonna put this in my house, but it's a shelf. This almost looks like flooring, but I'm obsessed with this. Like clearly celestial things, I love them. I literally have nowhere to put this. Back when I lived with my parents, I had this like hope chest that my dad refinished and it was really beautiful. And I spent two years buying everything that I thought I would ever want to decorate my house with. One day I went to Ikea with my mom and I spent like hundreds and hundreds of dollars to like stock my future kitchen that was years away. And that's almost how I feel with this right now. I just had to have it and I might just like tuck it away into storage for the one day where I buy a house. I know this isn't a huge piece, but I truly do not have a place for it anywhere. The only blank wall in my house is the one that the TV is on. And this is a recent development because I took down my photo wall and put the TV on the wall instead of on that thing. But the goal is to have two like giant artwork or poster or photographs back there. I just haven't done it. I really just love this little shelf and I'm imagining a plant and a candle. Speaking of candles, I got two. This one's a little pumpkin and it's blue. Last time I went to HomeSense, I found this little wooden one. The stem bugs me, but I still needed it. And then today was like the perfect one. And they both smell great. And then this one smells like a pumpkin pie. And I love it. Oh, and I finished reorganizing my bookshelves and then I took a bunch of books off for an Instagram picture. And also I realized I messed up one thing. Let me give you a quick tour. I feel like the theme of this vlog is like an appreciation of books. So let me like fix this really quick and then I'll give you a mini look. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. I reorganized my bookshelf. I guess I took clips of all of these things. I took pictures of bookmarks because my mom stopped by, and then I took a picture of the books that I just bought, and I posted on Instagram, and then I reorganized my makeup, and I put a bunch of my summer clothes into storage. Now I'm back, and I listened to the first 40 pages of this audiobook because I found phone script. 
So we're following this woman named Nikki. She has a lot of ideas for her life and she belongs to all of these like volunteer organizations and feminist groups. Her family's still really important to her and she tries to find a balance between going with tradition but also challenging expectations of her. And then one day she's tacking up a little poster for her sister to get into an arranged marriage um, and is trying to support her in that. And there's a flyer for this creative writing group and she thinks that she has the capability to teach them. Um, little does she know the person who put up the flyer didn't even really understand what they were advertising and the women who come to attend the group like barely speak English and a lot of them are much older than her expect to be addressed in a certain way um, and Nikki again has to find this balance between like respecting tradition but feeling like she is liberating these women and I think everybody is going to come to a lot of realizations throughout here so I'm excited to continue. But here's a quick look at my um, bookshelves, which really hasn't changed as far as genre. On the far left, I have a mix of nonfiction and anthologies. I used to split that up more, um, but just because of the colors I wanted to do, it's all mixed. So that's all on the little shelf over here. The top like three rows, I did a mix of fall kind of colors. I always struggle with where to put pink in my bookshelf when I'm organizing my color. And I thought putting pink in with orange and red and yellow kind of worked here and then when I film from this vantage point a lot of what you see is the fall colors for this season and then if you go down below the next row is a lot of purples and going into blues and then the bottom three yeah three are blues transitioning into greens so it's not like a strict dark blue to light blue to green some things are inserted in various places so it just flows nicer this shelf right here is mostly contemporary realistic fiction with some exceptions this is mystery thriller with some exceptions and this is anything fantasy or speculative horror sci-fi pretty much everything else is over there that's the shelf that is getting like overwhelmingly full and i have to take some of those and integrate them other places and then there's a vertical stack on each shelf and there is a pattern to where the vertical stack happens on each shelf but that's that. I don't have plans to do a bookshelf tour. I actually really hate bookshelf tours. <laughs> I think I've done one once and I did it in a way that wasn't every single title, but it did show like every single book. And at this point, a lot of books are behind these books. So it wouldn't be a full like discussion of every single book I own. But I just don't feel like it's interesting enough for me to go through every single section beyond this little clip here. You know, the worst part of getting sick for me is like, I have a cold for like, literally 24 hours every single time i get a little snivelly my throat is sore and then all of my symptoms disappear the next day and i feel perfectly fine like i feel great but for some reason every single time i get sick i completely lose my voice for like a week after it's so incredibly inconvenient anyway i am halfway through this i'm really enjoying it i've just been hanging out like yesterday and today not really doing much besides just working away on my computer i am still doing both the audiobook and the physical book enjoying them both would recommend them both um there are more like erotic stories in here than i expected like i knew that's what it was going to be about and i was talking about how it's not actually erotic it is it is erotic stories from these housewives we do get little chapters of the books that they're writing and it's really interesting because it shows like the personality of these women um, their preferences maybe that they haven't gotten to explore, the ways that they feel restrained, um, all of their, you know, fantasies. This is the only opportunity they've ever had to really talk with other women and explore their sexuality. So it's a really interesting storytelling style and choices made by this author. I just realized I haven't said this author's name out loud. By Bali Kaur Bali Bali. Bully, core, just swell. And then an equal amount of the story is following Nikki and her just relationship with her family. And she's getting involved in this romantic relationship that she hadn't planned. And it's just very sweet. And he automatically accepts her running this group. With a lot of other people, she has to hide what the group is actually doing, what she's teaching them, her involvement in these activities. But the way that she meets this guy, it's kind of all out on the table. And I think that she thinks um she is more modern than so many people but then throughout talking to these women she finds out that like her parents are more modern than she interprets them to be and she actually like is hiding a lot more things than she even recognized and i think that she's coming to relate to all of these women far more than she thought she would it's kind of like she set out to be the teacher but now she's a student 
I'm so sorry my friends I left you here this morning I went and got my hair dyed I got some work done I finished my book and I have crazy news it's another five star okay maybe not the craziest news in the world but like me and reading like we're getting along oh my god I haven't had a five star in three weeks which I feel like sounds normal except that I've read 30 books since I last gave out a five star I really just feel like I'm winning in life um this I have said before, I said it last month about everyone in this room will someday be dead. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure all this out. Um, that I just love the setting of a woman being thrown into a ridiculous situation, like a fish out of water, I guess that's the trope you call it, where she just has to figure stuff out. And that happens a lot in cozy mysteries. And there almost is a kind of element of a cozy mystery in here with how intense some of the topics go and the danger that our main character is in a little bit of the time. And obviously the sexual content, like I wouldn't call this a cozy mystery, but it, there's those elements for sure. Because much like everyone in this room will somebody be dead, there's a woman who's working this job that's not exactly what she expects and then she finds herself solving a murder or what she thinks is a murder. And there's something about like the people who signed up for her class, her getting to know these people, learning little things where she's like, hmm, I think something malicious has happened but other people don't really wanna accept that. Uh, we also have this group of people, um, these men who take it upon themselves to police this group of people. So our main character also finds herself under a certain amount of like surveillance. Like she has to be very intentional with the way she talks about the class she's running, only letting a few people in on the secrets of the class um, because there are people keeping their eye on her. But the women are just like so passionate about this class that they're telling all of their friends. They're bringing other people into it. And once they get together, they just use it as this big gossip session. And it was really fun. I feel like everything in here was balanced so well. The stories that we get to read, getting to know the women, Nikki and her character development, her relationship, her job, her like cultural decisions, responsibility to her family. And we've got a little mystery, like everything was just so well done. I can't not give this five stars. And I love when this happens, when there's a book that's sitting in my TBR closet and I bought for a reason, like I obviously want to read it. But then finally, after a year or two, a situation presents itself where this is a perfect pick for a secret TBR. And anything that gets me to read my backlist is a win. They often go really well, so. Sorry I held on to you for so long. Imagine if the final pick is a five star. I'm not putting any pressure on it, no expectations, but like imagine. So when I originally picked this, I wasn't really paying attention to what was happening here. And I thought it was about a brother and sister and how they take books differently, how their family treats them differently. And then I didn't know where the story was gonna go from there. But there is a girl and she has brothers, plural. They have been fed different stories in their childhood and now she is a mother. So it's about a mother and a son and the son wants to consume stories, but he's not satisfied with the books that she's grown up eating. He wants to eat people's minds thoughts, imaginations, I don't know. It's only a 300 page book. For some reason, the audiobook said it was 14 hours. I haven't checked out a sample of it or anything. If I'm planning on listening to it, I don't know. Liam is off at a friend's house, so we've got a couple hours. I also have to make dinner. I'll figure out how far I get into this. I was planning to finish this today, but I don't know. Also great news today, Book of the Month <laughs> announced that they're coming to Canada after um, so many years. The first time they reached out to me, I swear was like, 2017 2018 asking me to be an ambassador assuming that i was in the states and then someone has literally emailed me like every couple months since then being like do you want to be an ambassador and i'm like are you shipping to canada and then sometimes they're like no but do you still like want to promote the thing and i'm like no not unless you're willing to ship it to me as a human being and not just an influencer so it's happening it's finally oh my god it's happening i can't believe it i really hope the prices are reasonable so it's eight hours later and i've only made it 150 pages in um have i been doing anything else no i feel like all i've been doing is reading this book but i guess i just keep putting it down picking it up putting it down and I just remembered why I even had this on my radar it's because I was talking about reading more vampire books being really into vampire books and some people recommended this and since I mentioned it I think in my haul I got some comments saying like I don't know if you're really gonna vibe with it and those people are right the setup is really interesting we've got the patriarchal society and 
women book eaters are more rare and they're used um, a lot for like breeding and there are these scenes and these flashbacks from the past of her giving birth that are just so tough to read and then her situation current day with her son Kai and everything that they're navigating while he needs food. It's divided up into acts and I would say the first act worked for me um more specifically like the first five chapters because there was a little reveal around chapter five or six and i was like "Ooh, what's happening here but overall i just find the writing not super compelling though the setup is the world building is lacking a lot for me because it just feels like a lot of things are being thrown in from like dragons to aliens i don't i don't know a lot of things are just briefly mentioned as like being a part of this world it's our world but just being a part of society and then not really getting an explanation for why this is happening the reason behind things like how we got to where we are i just get the feeling that those things are never going to be explained like we're just supposed to go along for the ride and just be cool with whatever she tells us is happening so i'm going to try to put myself in that mindset tomorrow when i wake up and continue in this and we'll see how it goes for me. More good news is here. I actually ended up giving this four stars by the end, which is not the direction I thought it was heading. Um, I'm glad I decided to take my time with it, even though it pushed this video back a couple days. This really is just not like a two, three sitting type of book. And I ended up appreciating a lot of things about it. This genre is so hard to pinpoint and I want to pitch it as like a dark fairy tale I think. There's a lot of familiarity here. I don't think it'll be hard for anyone to really get into this. It's just the writing itself, it it lacks a little bit of roundedness. It's like sometimes I don't fully understand the world around us because it is set in the real world and therefore it's like urban fantasy but it also it feels like it's set in its own universe but then sometimes there will be little insertions of like real people just like walking around and playing nintendo and all of these references but i really do feel like we're in another world though it'll say things like book eaters look like normal people they walk around like normal people like nobody would ever know it just doesn't feel that way i can't describe it but the conversations these people are having and the environments that they're in it feels like they're in an alternate like re like they're in the upside down and though i liked it that one star is really the environment if she had taken a couple more years sunny dean i don't know to write this i feel like you would have added in some more not just world building but like magic system building give me a lot of different characters and historical context of like how everybody is impacted by eating the books and like what it feels like and the intelligence that it bestows the story was so small and intimate but the concept is so large that i wanted the storytelling to feel that size but if the stories that you look for are more about motherhood and like desperate love for your child and all about sacrifice and trying to they're trying to escape the situation that they're put into and it's so interesting learning about the mind eaters and the way that they like take on qualities of the people that they eat so this kid is like four years old but acts like a 50 year old man and is like trying to smoke and drink and so throughout the book she's grappling with like how to treat her own child what she should allow him to do what information she can trust him with and there's all of these battling emotions with trying to keep things from him and even us as a reader like we get certain reveals of her history um the his birth what happened and all of it was so beautiful and tender but then like for me it was good because i often don't like reading about motherhood because we often get a young child who is incredibly irritating sometimes i can look past it but it often just like it doesn't work for me when we're supposed to like really dislike this child and there most certainly is gray morality here like they are creatures he cannot control his hunger um but he also is like acting like an entire group 
of people sometimes. So it made his perspective and his character voice enjoyable. I don't wanna use the word enjoyable, but there's no better word. More than tolerable, whatever. There's also this absolutely beautiful friendship in here between our main character, Devin, and this guy named Jero, and just the ways that they come back together throughout the story. And then there's also like some little side love story. Our main character doesn't identify in a specific way, but she says she doesn't like men. So again, there's an element of tenderness between her and this woman. And I just think the balance was really good between horrific things happening, her dealing with the grief and loss that she's experienced, doing everything she can not to lose her son, and then also these like beautiful moments where she connects with other people. Other people come out of the woodwork to help her, while there's also like huge organizations of people who want, I mean, to kill her kid. I liked the ending enough. I feel like it could have done a little bit more. It almost reminded me of my feelings towards After the Flood that I read recently. Similar um, topics at hand, even though completely different like genres. So that's everything that I read in this video. This I'm gonna have to give a two, sad about it. Then I had a couple like objective fives and then a passionate five and then we ended it with a four so i think this was a pretty successful secret tbr for me i'm sure like the thumbnail and concept aren't the most like attention grabbing and like interesting to people who aren't already subscribed in here but i'm really glad i got to participate and complete my own reading challenge i would love to hear how far you've gotten into the buzzwordathon or buzzword readathon our buzzword reading challenge so far in 2022 have you been successful are you gonna read any of these let me know and i'll see you later bye